I met Jim, Mike, Paul, Joe, and DC back in 2014 when I interviewed them about losing their camp in the Ottawa, and I've been back to visit with them a few times since. Not having a camp to get together at was not an option for these five. Two of these guys I knew since high school, so almost 50 years. And the other two guys I know at Tech, so about 40, 40 plus years. So we've been, we've known each other a long time. This group. Is that good? <laughs> you tell me. <laughs> well, it was 2009 when we bought the 40, uh, uh, because we knew yeah. the lease was going to be up. We knew it was here, private 40, and our goal was to not be without a camp. So, so that year we bought the 40 and we all threw some money in a pool to get started and it took us about about five or six years to swallow the cost of the land and three years before I think in 14 leases were up in 17 so we started uh, clearing land and getting going up here then stayed at the old camp and uh, four wheelers back and forth for lunch dinner evenings improved the road coming in <clears throat> yeah had to do a lot of road work Gusty Gary Gustafson did the road work for us Couple of times, all the while hanging on to the slim hope that something would change the Forest Service course and we'd be able to work something out on our own place. But that shot clock came and went like we thought it would. But yeah, yeah. Thankfully, we were hunting with a bunch of go-getters, and we all decided, "Hey, let's go get this done." So we jumped on it. But it, it proved out, and I think the biggest thing for all of us. Um, be tempting at a time like that to sit around the bar with your buddies <clears throat> complaining about what happened to you and, and we moaning. did some of that oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> moaning but then what are you going to do Several about times. it at some point you say what are we going to do and so like joe said we got going about the property and and uh, we made our plans and got to work so five guys all over 60 built this place by ourselves well not by ourselves we had help from several friends and, and a lot of outside help but we didn't hire a contractor we got it all done and it was really healing for all of us to go through the process of planning building being busy uh, it moved our minds on from the negative and on to the positive it's kind of bittersweet in the sense that you know there's a little bit of bitterness about what we don't have anymore you know the river uh, but some of the sweetness that's come out of it is, you know, the friendships that have grown much more solid, generally, over and over. Because it was like over three years, we were coming up here three or four times a year for a long work week to, you know, build this. Yeah, we spent more time together on this than we ever did when, <laughs> when my wife tallied up how many weeks of vacation I've taken. <laughs> then you want to go hunt. But anyway, so there's a the bitterness, there's a, still a little bit of, you know, why couldn't something different have come out of that? But the sweetness is, you know, what we've done. And things like, you know, we repurposed this big window from the old camp. We, uh, the sauna building has um, the uh, shakes that were hand split that were on the, the old camp. And out of those 3,800, I don't know how many we moved over here. Uh, we just took all, of them, all the best ones. Most of them it took to do this building. And this is pretty much the same layout as our old camp, but we made each room a little bigger. That was our repurposed uh, kitchen sink from the old camp. The same uh, stove. I don't know if you remember at our old camp, one of the gags we had was inside the door was a light switch that didn't work. There was no electricity. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> So now we have electricity that the light switch actually works, if the generator's on. The famous pink buck pole has been moved to, to the Sunnyside camp too. Oh, and getting that buck pole out and bringing it up here was no picnic either, eh, right, Dan? He's up on a ladder, and we decided we had to take the top off. Yeah, right? we, were trying to, we were trying to lift the top off, because it's it's a three-piece uh we have been rusted pole. together all those years. I whacked that thing with the sledgehammer and the flying squirrel. <laughs> <laughs> That surprised us a little bit. <laughs> what the hell? What ended? His bell was rung. He crashed into the shrub behind us. We were able to um, build a good woodshed, you know, and just kind of pool our talents and get some, get a nicer camp going. So 
we have a screen porch. We never screened in the porch at the old camp, so we have a place to sit outside and be out of the bugs during the spring, spring and early summer. That's helpful. We have multiple decks. We have the, the sun, sun deck. We have the grilling deck that's covered without a screen. And we have the sun deck for the tanning and then the loading deck across the front. So we kind of went. We made things easy on ourselves. We made a chunk of removable railing out there. So when you come in, you can just back the pickup right up to the deck over the tailgate and everything goes right out onto the deck. That works easy. Lots of amenities that we didn't have at the other camp that we are really enjoying in our advanced age. Yeah. <laughs> these, guys, these guys are old. We used to have to carry water up the river from up that bank and it was, uh, somebody was going to die doing that one of these days. So here we put in a cistern, we collect water off the roof, we put some sumps in the cistern to power water up to the sink and that really is working well. We have never even come close to running out of water here. We put a thousand gallon tank in the ground and uh, we put a V-shaped trench all along this wall of the cabin. So every bit of snow and water that comes off the roof hits that V-trench. We put some poly in it and some sock pipe, four inch sock pipe in the bottom and sloped it to the cistern. Uh, the cistern overflows when it gets too much water. And every time we show up here, that thing is just topped right off. Thousand gallons of fresh clear water. It's crystal clear, we don't drink the water, but it has filtered through about 18 inches of sand and gravel and filter cloth, so it stays nice and clean. And we just haul them on what we need to drink, and that's all the time it takes to fill up five gallons right there. The old camp was called Camp with a K. This one has a new name. It's the Sunnyside Camp. We thought that'd be a, a, an apt name. We like hanging around the bar of the sunny side. And we asked Ed if he minded, and he said, no, I don't care for I had. You know, so you know, I had think for 40 years. The things we've been talking about, um, about not complaining about what's wrong, but pursuing something better, we looked on the sunny side of the issue and uh, made the, something happen. If you look in the plat book, the, uh, the ownership is Sunnyside LLC. We're the only one up and down this stretch of the river that rebuilt. But there weren't that many opportunities to rebuild places to get where you could do it. So we were fortunate to find this, this 40 in here. Nice and close. Nice and close to where we were. Yeah. Only a five minute four wheeler ride to the old camp. It's pretty easy. 12 minute walk. Road permitting. Jim and Bob uh, traveled up from Carolina. We got a lot of deer. That was back when we could get doe permits. And so we were having a butchering party. There were two weasels and they came right inside the camp with us. They were running around between our legs while we were butchering on the table. One of them went upstairs to check out the loft. There was a, a deer carcass we had just... Uh, well, they were hanging like this. Yeah, we were taking the... We'd taken all the quarters off and everything we could get off of the carcass. And we laid it on the ground there and getting ready to dispose of it. We were looking out the kitchen window a couple hours later and it started to wiggle. It was moving. We were both looking at it. It was spooky. All of a sudden this weasel pokes his head out with a deer ear in his mouth and from inside and takes it off. It's a big commitment building the new camp. The old one was built late 70s, early 80s and we just threw it up. We went to Upco and we got the lease and hauled in some lumber and went to it. Chainsaw cuts everything. Yeah, this yeah. one we, we actually brought in a generator and had to get permit. building permits and you can't just throw up a camp anymore, you got to do it right, so. We get to pay taxes now? Oh boy. Mm -hmm. uh, we did before, but yeah. they were on leased land, so they were negligible. And this one's being treated like a residence, so. Another sweet bitterness was all this time we spent up here and we worked our butts off, we didn't get to fish much. We, we didn't get to hunt often because we were trying to get something to we kind of had a joking thing about our contract that uh, like after the second or third stint where we'd work for 10 days with a no time off, we said, okay, next time, next stint, everybody gets a half a day to do whatever you want. You can sleep in, you can fish, whatever like that. So everyone felt guilty about using that half day. So the joke became, are we banking? You know, carryovers, you know. We so probably have two weeks built we all, We have about two weeks vacation time to do us here, but. Uh, Jim was kind of the yard boss for the whole project, so he didn't get very, he, 
even if you sat down for a minute, he'd come up with something with for you to do. What's that mean? Hey, I stood in the yard and told you what to yeah. do with that. <laughs> well, I saw you up on the time. We had an interesting mix of talents among the five of us here. Everybody was good at something. And between us, we kind of covered covered all the aspects of, of uh, what we needed to do. So it worked out handy. We had enough tools and enough talents between us. And couldn't have done it without each of us, is basically what it came yeah. comes down to. DC put it well one day. We were talking about with a bunch of type A kind of personalities in this camp, at what point do we quit working and shift and go enjoying? We've been doing 10 day stints three or four times a summer for three years in here. And go, 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 you're lining up what you're gonna do, getting the building materials, getting everybody here, fuel, generators, blah, 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 and you keep going. And when you get here, it's such an effort to get everything and everybody here, you go, 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 go to maximize the trip. At what point are we gonna come here and not work? It's like, we're gonna shift gears. And DC that. put it beautifully. He said, yeah, what we gotta do is instead of coming here and trying to do five things in a day, we need to come here and do one thing in five days. <laughs> I thought, that's it, that was well put. And that's pretty much what we've done in the last five days. Yeah. <laughs> so we're finally to that point. All it takes is time and effort. And parts. Lots of parts. Lots of scrounging and lots of friends and helping out. We salvaged barn wood out of the old beaver slide camp. We salvaged some other parts out of the old Doe Haven camp. <laughs> Those guys weren't going to use them. We said, well, we'll take them over. We're not proud. Scavenge, scrounge, beg, borrow. I don't think we stole anything, did we? So I can recall. Nope, 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 nope. No, 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 I wasn't there. And we're running out of projects. Yeah. We're down, yeah. To, we're down to arguing about decorating. Yeah, we had a meeting. <laughs> The other day, yesterday. Our, yeah, our shareholder meeting was yesterday. Work, spring work stint. What's on our agenda? We're scrounging to find things to do. We've got everything done. Reorganize. Let's see, the we're going to wash the windows. Yeah. <laughs> Organize. Take inventory of what's in the crawl space. Yeah. There we. <laughs> we're able to strengthen our friendships and move on to a place to gather and hunt and bring our families and. We've got everything the old camp had and more, except the river. Except but we can go visit. We know where it is.